Welcome back to the Essentials Club. I'm Maddie, and today I'm so excited to take you through the steps of how to hand make your own elastic waist shorts. So Jess from the Eve, I'll tag her below. She was so kind enough to share these steps over on the blog, and I thought I would just bring them to life in a video format, as I know some of you find that a lot easier to follow rather than just the blog post. So what we need to get into this today is some fabric, obviously, to make your shorts. The good thing about the elastic waist is that we can pretty much use anything, whether it's a stiffer form material or a softer, more flowing fabric. So like linens, denims, anything will work really for this. Then we also need another pair of pants to reference, which we're just gonna trace and find the pattern from. I'll talk through the details of that when we get to the step. And then we need a measuring tape, some pins, fabric chalk or pencil, some matching thread to your fabric that you'll be making the pants out of, as well as the matching bobbin thread, some fabric scissors, the elastic for the waistband, and then obviously the sewing machine. If you give this tutorial a go, please tag the Eve and the Essentials Club as we'd both love to see how your shots turn out. Let's get into making it. For step one, we lay out our fabric with a good side facing up, and then we grab our reference shorts, which we're going to trace. This is worthwhile noting what type of pants you'll be tracing and then adapting it to that. So at the end of the day, we want our shorts to be kind of oversized so that they gather in and can slip on easily. So obviously, if you're working with a tighter pair of pants, make sure that you add an extra inch or so seam allowance to the extra seam allowance so that it gives it that oversized fit. Another thing as well, if your shorts that you're tracing are a low rise make sure that you add the amount that you need for it to become a high-waisted fit so we grab our shorts and we're going to turn them inside out and then from there we fold them again so that we're just focusing on the shape of one panel when you do this you can clearly see the middle seam the crotch line and the rest of the pants so for the inch around all the side edges that is just going to be a general seam allowance and obviously as i mentioned before if you need to add more for it to become that looser fit add that on to extra seam allowance as well and the top area will be tracing three inches from the top and that means that we'll have enough room for the elastic to fit into the waistband. So I'm just going to go around and trace this, keeping in mind all the extra amounts I need to keep on each side. If you notice that your side seam edges inwards, we're just going to adapt that and make it a straight line. So that might mean that there's quite a bit of extra seam allowance up there, but that's fine because we're going to have the elastic bend that's going to bring it all back together. Now that I've got this first bit traced, I'm going to remove the pants and then just cut out the section that I've traced. So I'm actually just going to use this as a template to then cut out a replica of it. If this has a clear good and bad side, make sure that we face the good sides together so that when we come to sew them together, they're matching. Now I have the first two panels cut out. These were the matching back panels. So I'm gonna put these aside and then grab the pants again and just switch it so now we focus on the front side. And the reason we've gone back to these pants as the template for the other side is because the crotch has a different measurement for the front and the back. So we just wanna make sure that we replicate them in the correct way. So again, we're just gonna trace around this side, making sure we leave an inch or enough seam allowance all around the edges to get it to that nice fit. And then we add the three inches to the top. So let's trace and do that. Again, I'm just going to use this newly cut piece as the template so that they're matching and making sure that the good sides are facing when I place it down and trace around it. So now that I've got the matching front and back panels all cut out, I've just prepped the elastic waistband and to figure that out, I just got the elastic and wrapped it around my waist and got it to a point that felt comfortable where I knew it could hold the pants up but it wasn't too tight that it was cutting off flow. So then I added a couple of inches and cut it at that point. It's time to start sewing the pieces together. So we're going to grab the matching back panels and the first sewing line we're going to do is just down this middle seam. So we're going to do that for this panel and for those panels. Over on the blog post, which I've linked below, Jess talks about how to create French seams, which is just a cleaner, nicer finish compared to a normal seam. Today, I'm just showing you how to do a normal seam, but if you prefer to do the French seam, go and have a look at the extra steps Jess shows how to do. Unfold one and face it with the good side up. Unfold the other and face it with the good sides in and then we're just going to match the side seams Sew up there match the crotch seams 
sew them and then we're almost done with our pair of pants. If for some reason there's any edges that aren't matching, just make sure you trim it so it's nice and straight. So we're just going to fold it inside out. Do one line of a double fold to create a nice clean hem. I'd say just like a quarter of an inch or as small as you can. Just fold these, pin them in and sew that in place. Now that we've sewn that simple hemline across the top, we're going to start preparing it for the waistband. Let's grab our measuring tape and measure how wide our elastic band is. For me, that's half an inch. And to be safe, I'm actually going to make the tunnel one inch, which is double that amount, which means that there's a bit of wriggle room. Once I figured that amount out, I'm just going to fold this as like a super oversized hem and start delegating the areas. So what that looks like close up is this oversized hem section folded over and I've measured it to be two inches and that's because one inch in the middle is going to be where the elastic band goes. And then the half inch above is going to be for the frill section and the half inch below is just for the safe zone for where we sew. So I'm just gonna keep folding this hem section over for the waistband and pinning it in place. And as I do that, I'm also measuring out the tunnel where I'll be sewing. So just to clarify, it is the measurement of your elastic waistband height and then add say about half an inch to that and that will be the tunnel area that we're going to allow for it to go into and then we're going to leave half an inch above and half an inch below and then we just mark that out all around, pin it in place, it's time to sew and we're just going to do this in a few stages. Phase one, we're just going to focus on this top line that we've marked which is the one closest to the top of the hem and we just start at one seam and just sew all the way around the edge of the hem at this line that we've marked. Now that we've finished sewing across that top section, we're just gonna switch the focus down to the other line that we drew, which is parallel, but just lower. We're gonna start again at just the side seam and sew all the way around following that line. But the thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna stop about an inch from where we started, or even more if you want, meaning that we can allow the elastic to slip in, wrap around, and then we'll close it up afterwards. We're going to grab a safety pin attach it to the end of the elastic and then start threading that through this designated hole and around the tunnel that we've made for the waistband. So now how we do that is we just pop it through and then you kind of gather it up and then just pull that section and just keep doing that the whole way around until you reach the other end and just make sure that this end of the elastic doesn't get sucked in while you're pulling it. So you can either get another safety pin and pin it in place to prevent that or just keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't get pulled through. So now that I've made it back around to the part where we started, I'm just going to pull that elastic out, remove that safety pin, overlap it by about an inch or two and just sew that bit of the elastic together. I normally switch my setting to a zigzag when I'm stitching the elastic together. That way it just holds it nice and secure and I just do a few back stitches and the same sections and that should keep it nice and sturdy together. And then we'll pull it through and tuck it away and it'll be hidden all in the waistband area. Now that that elastic is all joined, I just pull it through and I'm just going to do one final stitch to close that hole that we left open and make sure that I switch it back to the straight stitch for this. Now that we've got the waistband all finished, it might be a good time to try it on and just make sure everything is proportionally right and make any adjustments if need be. But next we're going to focus on the final step, which is cleaning up the bottom hem. So once you've tried it on and figured out how much you need to take it up to get it to a length that you're happy with, we will then turn the shorts inside out and just start to do a double roll for the final hem. For me, that's just folding about a quarter of an inch and then another quarter of an inch. And then I'm just gonna keep doing that all the way around the bottom, pin it in place and then sew it and I'm all done. Another thing as well, if you wanted maybe to make these frayed edges, I'd suggest maybe sewing about half an inch from the edge, just doing one line around the bottom. And it means it will just stop at that point and not get too excessively frayed. Pick whatever final touch you want and then go for it. Make sure as a final step to clean everything up, you go and zigzag or overlock the edges that you've left frayed on the inside seams. And there you have a nice pair of shorts to go and enjoy. I hope yours turned out good. And if you did happen to follow along this tutorial, please tag me at The Essentials Club and Jess at The Eve, as we'd both love to see how your shorts turned out. Thanks so much for joining in and I will see you around in the next tutorial. I